We were always, always trying to do more with less. He does have some pretty dynamic ideas about what he wants and what is wanted in a project. I was working with an architect called Paul Manuso. Um, Wendy Foster was working for Paul Manuso at this time. And she said to Norman, oh, we've got this engineer who's working with us. Huh? And he seems quite interesting. Why don't we talk to him? And so Norman said, yeah, OK. So the next thing I know, I'm on a train down to Truro. Yes, that's right. I get picked up by uh, Richard's wife, Sue, uh, taken to have a very nice breakfast with the client, Marcus Brumwell. We go out and see the site, and so, and so it goes on from there. He had a house over the, on the other side of this creek. It's called Pill Creek. It's a lovely spot, actually. And um, it wasn't a very nice house. It's not really worth preserving. I said, why don't we build you a new house? So they had got the commission to do Creek Veen. I've had so many happy times here. Anyway, that's how I met Norman and all that Team 4 gang. I did Reliance Controls with them before they moved out of Hampstead. Norman and I were in, involved, both of us personally, in that project. It was quite a challenge though, that job, because a number of things really. I mean, relatively long spans for those days. I mean, what was it, 40 foot. It was very simple, but it was a great building, I think. And it was the first of its type. And it was very much based on the, you know, the um, American theory of, you know, simple sheds, like the teaching of people like Ezra Ehrenkrantz, for instance, you know. And, um, and we were absolutely determined to do a building that had a flat roof. And, you know, all the other f factories around had zigzag roofs of one sort or another, or mono pitch. And what did we do? We did a double skin of um, profile metal steel. Yeah, and that worked beautifully. No one rang up one day and said, um, we've got this possible IBM job, job for IBM at Corsham. And he said, um, do you think we could set a, a temporary office up in Bedford Street for us, for Fosters, and for me? And we were there already and I said, yeah, OK. So what do we need to do? We borrowed a table and six Batoya chairs from Zev Aram. We got the job. So Norman said, well, I think we'd better move in here because they were still in Hampstead in this little flat, which they had to convert every day from living to office. This site only had a seven year license on it. So we, we did this very simple raft, a flat piece of concrete with stiffenings underneath the the columns, all the lattice trusses were the same depth, which was clever, and they were, you could put the whole lot up with a forklift truck, so you didn't even need a crane. So they ran this forklift truck over the foundation, the, the slab that we'd already put down there, put the trusses up, put, surround it by this modern art glass cladding, and that's it. Braced it at the corner, you have a column come and four lattice coming in. You brace diagonally across the corners to take an air conditioning unit. And then we, we, and then we got the commission to double the size, which was quite nice. And it's still there today. So it was all to do with deflection, because we had this quite long span main roof structure. Uh, which was steel, it had hexagonal holes. And I remember there was an argument, or discussion rather, about how much it was going to deflect once they'd got the roof deck on, because it was, we'd, put, we'd put a camber in it deliberately, because if we put it in flat, horizontally, then we'd put the loads on, it would have sagged. I mean, he was a very, very clever man, actually, there's no doubt about it. Most or all Oxford colleges, 
or in Cambridge colleges as well for that matter. They're, they're built round a courtyard. But I seem to remember that there wasn't room for expansion above ground. And that what we thought was, well, why not put the thing underneath the courtyard, existing courtyard? This is a good idea, actually, because it wouldn't have been cheap. It's not the easiest way to build a building, to big, dig a big hole. I don't know. It would have been a nice job to do, actually. But as we say, one that got away, there are so many that... Yeah, we were always striving for something which was pretty efficient. Um, always striving, striving also for something that's elegant, that looks good, feels good. I mean, if you look, for instance, at the, the end elevation or either end elevation of the Sainsbury Centre and you see that lattice girder kind of going across, slightly curved, of course. Um, I think it's really quite elegant. I like, it's one of my favorite buildings, actually. The original design was nothing like that at all. It wasn't based on a truss. It was based on an eye section, you know, these massive great uh, portal frames, as we call them. And I remember going into the office one Thursday. I said, what's up with you, Norman? He said, oh, I've been thinking of it. I don't like, I don't, I don't like that um, portal frame solution. And I said, well, if you don't like it, we'd better just scrap it and go back and, you know, we'll stop, we'll do something else, which is what we did. We had only a very minor sort of secondary structure that ran in the other direction because the lattice trusses were at close, quite close intervals. You've got the two mast towers, the, lat the lattice towers and the lattice thing across the... So there any, basically there are three elements in that building, you know. Uh, but those structures are not, they're not pin-jointed, they're welded. I don't know, it's a different, yes, it's a different way of thinking. Well, it was originally Middleton Hall, because that was the name of the house that was on the site originally, which then got demolished. Very simple, actually, because uh, a series of circular tube arches at regular intervals, but not varying di overall diameter, but varying wall thickness, because the spans varied, of course, from very, very short on the ends to is it 50 meters, I think, on the main, the main span. It's quite big, actually. It's a combination of uh, architecture, structure, and landscape. I mean, there are some architects, actually, who don't really want to have a dialogue with their engineer at all. And we'd always sit down and s still sketch things. But one of the things I learned from him, I don't know how I got onto this, is pushing things to the limit, structurally. It's called concept before calculation, right? In other words, you know, don't sit down with a pen or pencil and work out, you know, the bending moment or whatever, what's going to happen when you haven't even explored the various different concepts that a structure might take, the forms that it might take, and the materials you might use, or combinations of materials also. One of the things I, I should say really is that certainly in the Fitzroy Street days, there was a really nice working atmosphere between all of us. You were just seen as a designer in your own right. <laughs>